All right, welcome to another edition of Above the Bridge podcast. This is episode seven. Um, shout out to our sponsor, Defend Hawaii, for always keeping me fresh. Shout out to our producer, boy band John. What's up, John? How you been? Happy birthday, by the way. So today's guest is it's going to be a good episode. This is one of my best friends. Um, he is one of my business partners for multiple ventures. We had a store together. He was my co-business owner for Artist Groove Network. Our store was called Ecosystems. Currently, he is the vice president of Defend Hawaii Clothing Company. Um, he is my best friend. He is my daughter's godfather, Chris Meheula. What's up, Chris? Aloha, Thaddeus. <laughs> man, and you got a lot of, a lot of intros you, you, to your name. <laughs> How you been, man? I'm all right. I mean, just stressing over the holiday during COVID. I mean, it's been oh, yeah. kind of a, uh, a struggle, but we're getting through and we're still open. And hopefully this continue to open and more tears open up, but not without worrying about everybody's safety. So. For sure. So your guys' store has been completely closed at one point, and then now you guys are reopened due to like the governor's tier factors. Yes, we're we're open. Uh, we have the uh, the no one store over in Winter Mall, and we were closed for a while. I want to say like ten weeks over the whole course of the year, and we've been open again, and we're excited to get through the year and and get back to some normalcy. Oh yeah, and hopefully. This is the time. I don't know. This is a good time to have it open, like getting into the holidays. So when, when it was closed, did you see your internet sales like pop up? Yeah, for sure. Um, it boosted because people were just, I mean, overall, I think people are slowly transitioning from brick and mortar shopping to, to e-commerce. But um, we did see an increase from that time of the COVID for sure. Oh, that's cool. Cause I mean, it's like that's the way to get your stuff, and everybody wants your guys' stuff. So, Defend Hawaii—that's the brand now. Like your um, that's your job. That's your you're the vice president doing everything. Like, how's that been? Like, from like just working retail, now you're like running all the stuff. And I and I did see the progression through the years of how Defend Hawaii became such a um predominant source to learn about the culture so i don't know i know that had a lot to to do with you changing things up so how, how is that coming about i mean just overall i think as a business we decided that uh um to make a turn into uh, some new things and and kind of really be about what the name is about and uh we were lucky enough to team up with the right nonprofits and uh the right i mean build relationships with the right people and and like uh, Daniel Anthony and Sam Kapoizem and just overall, we we were trying to be helpful with the, with the community, with Hawaii Food Bank this past year. With everything going on, we, we jumped on with Ron Mizitani and we're doing stuff with them. And uh, it's been, I guess, amazing, to be honest. Like just <laughs> learning more about my culture, you know, like uh, being diving in and changing up the designs and it just, it's a wonderful feeling and, and it's a, it's a cool process really yeah, using because, the brand to kind of help teach people more about who we are as, as uh, people out here in Hawaii, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I, I remember like seeing the brand going from one thing and just becoming more about the culture. And it's, it's pretty cool because I mean, I got to partake in a few things. Like I got to Pompoy with my daughter and like you guys had that going on. And it's, you, you've been doing a lot of things in the community and that's crazy to see because I've known you for a while and it's, it's something that you weren't really active in. And now it's like almost every week you got something going on. And, and as a friend, I'm proud to see that, dude. Like I'm, I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> Mahalo. I mean, it's still... I mean, I, I, there's a lot more that I should be doing, I feel. Um, but, I mean, there's a big switch from us running events every single weekend, <laughs> three events a week. I mean, we've done over, probably over a thousand parties and then two switches oh, up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> living in Kahalu, like, you know, farming and stuff like that is it's different. Yeah. Uh, I got to spend some time out with Kahana Cultural Living over with uh, 
with Kawe and, and Daniel, and they do some pretty cool stuff out there. They they uh, just teaching everyone and and getting people to to understand like real what Hawaii is about rather than just the tourism that they show on Waikiki and all that stuff. Well, that's important, and it's important for the um the people here to to learn it. Like sometimes the youth gets caught up in other things and they don't they don't show pride in their own culture it's kind of, you guys are kind of bringing them back to that so that's that's pretty dope i mean i don't think we are but um i think we're just a brand that represents what the community is about and defending what we are out here and we're pretty uh vast different um a lot of differences and i think the real people that are changing stuff are uh People under like you know behind the scenes, politicians. But we need to get the right people in there. We just had voting, and I don't know if I really agree with some of the people that got picked. But I mean, it is what it is, and we gotta just still <laughs> use what we can, make calls to the the offices, and and yeah. But the brand isn't just that. I mean, we still have our hard hitting stuff. We're still backing all the MMA guys, all of our boys from Hybrid House to Hawaii Elite MMA. What Charles is doing out yeah, there yeah. with the boys. Russell, Shout out to Lewis. Charles. <laughs> Shout out to Charles. Yeah. He's he going to come on one night. And the rest of the boys, too. You know, They really put Hawaii's fighters on the map. And we're, a lot of them are getting chances, man. I mean, and we're, yeah, still, they're all, we're still backing all the MMA boys. So that's always fun because that's exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and out here in Hawaii, you know, that's what we're about. We, <laughs> we're fighting. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> you know, like it's. It's, it's awesome to see the boys go out there and, and get paid for it and make it a job and be professional with it. Well, it's cool to see because a lot of these young um, fighter athletes don't have a chance to get sponsored. And um, being that you guys do work closely with those two, um, two gyms, they kind of help you guys take care of these, these young fighters and, and, I mean, to be sponsored by Defend Hoy is kind of a big deal if you're a young fighter coming up. At I mean, least I would, I would think so. I hope so. I hope everyone's proud to be rocking <laughs> with a brand like us, you know. <laughs> well, you sponsored me, so I'm, I'm fucking proud. <laughs> the boys are coming up, you know, like Johnny Diggs is killing it in Bellator. Uh, Martin, yeah. and, well, Lewis was supposed to have a fight. I'm pretty sure they're going to get him another one. Martin's out there in UFC. The Natividad brothers are doing awesome in LFA. Uh, I think Lowen's coming back. That's going to be exciting. Oh, that guy's a that guy's a beast. That guy's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make a comeback for Thaddeus. Kickboxing. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll, I'll maybe, make a maybe comeback. Mike make a comeback too. I don't know. <laughs> he probably will have a better chance. I'll, I'll come back if if it was a thirty second one round fight and they can't hit me from the chin up. <laughs> you gotta make your podcast you gotta do your podcast you gotta have any blemishes on the face yeah 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 i don't think i can take a punch anymore <laughs> anyway that's that's not gonna happen <laughs> so what you guys must be crazy now it's holiday season huh so how's that going um we're just getting prepped up for the sales i mean uh it was because everything is so different with, with black friday this year we are trying to do things online and um kind of plan a sale every single weekend. So um, by the time you guys see this, it's going to be sales have happened already in the store, but the Black Friday is still going to happen. There's going to be a big bunch of stuff, $12 tees, 20% um, off the entire store out at no one. And uh, online, Cyber Monday, we're, we're getting ramped up and we're going to have specials. Um, I think just online in general, like $12 tees online, um, cheap lanyards, uh, Blow out shirts, blow out board shorts, blow out uh, hats. So you guys store online is what? DefendHawaii.com? Shop.DefendHawaii.com. Okay. Shop.DefendHawaii.com. But you can get there from DefendHawaii.com as well. But Shop.DefendHawaii.com. Okay. And your sales are um, populated through online as well. So no one is in uh, Winter Mall, right? Winter Mall, yes. That's our, our kind of our flagship. We They carry the most product of... Uh, Defend Hawaii over there. But then we're out in TNC. TNC is awesome, a, a great partner of ours. They've been carrying us for a minute. We have Razors over in Pearl Ridge, Sarah's over in Ala Moana. Um, Big Island, we have Oshima Surf and Skate. 
We have Oshima Surf over in Maui, foam company in Maui. We're getting, uh, we're just trying to be as a, not all over the place, but but really find the niches and the, and the right stores for people to shop our, our, our brand. Wow, that's awesome. Well, that's cool. Like, honestly, online is the way to go. It's a 24-hour store worldwide, so can't go wrong with that. Yeah. It's e-commerce is a whole another animal, man. I mean, we're still learning and trying to do our best. And uh, I mean, if people ever want to jump on the team, Defend Hawaii, shoot me an email. Um, we're we're looking for some interns and stuff. Oh, that's a that's plug fun. right there. You wanna you wanna be part of Defend Hawaii team? Hit up Chris, and he'll um interview you. <laughs> so, do they gotta be hot or what, what's the deal? <laughs> no, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. <laughs> we're not that brand <laughs> that's a good thing we, we won't go in, go that route we won't say anything on that <laughs> we're not that brand <sighs> so so this is gonna drop black friday week so um thanksgiving and black friday so what so what's the hours like you're gonna like i remember when we had our ecosystem store in waikele like we had Thanksgiving dinner and we were like shooting to Waikele and just ready at midnight for the ruckus. Is that the same at Winter Mall or like what's the what's the deal? Especially now with COVID, is is it going to be crazy or? It's, it's I I don't think we can be too crazy, but um, I I have no idea. You know, like everyone's kind of up in the air and nobody really knows how it's gonna how it's gonna work, but. We are going to be closed on Thanksgiving for the first time and I don't know how long. So I might be able to have a Thanksgiving dinner. That's honestly, that's, that should be what it's about. I don't think I've had a Thanksgiving since 2013 <laughs> when I went traveling and I, and I had a Thanksgiving dinner in Orlando. <laughs> so that's going to be nice. That's going to be, that's a, that's a cool switch up. You know, like I, I get to be with my family on Thanksgiving and uh, Friday we get to start the madness at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. Okay. Oh, that's that's way better. For me, personally, I'm not a fan of doing the Black Friday on Thanksgiving at like 8 o'clock and people are camped out. It takes away from the holiday and what Thanksgiving is, is being with family and it's not become a merch- merchandise buy at Walmart for some cheap TV. is lost its kind of value. So I'm happy that you're not gonna be at you're not gonna be working until six a.m. Yeah, so that's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, that's um, definitely cool. I just hope I get to have some um, some of that famous uh, park Thanksgiving dinner. You know, like uh, oh yeah, you know that the salad, <laughs> that that calvi stuffing. Yep, you know how we do. <laughs> I'm excited for that right there. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent. And don't forget Capoon's giving. <laughs> <laughs> that's not <have> happening <laughs> yeah it's for all you people who don't know then you don't need to know definitely but, okay so black friday is coming up you guys all situated for your holidays um we have, we have masks we have a whole bunch of different things online and uh in the store so oh that's pretty that's tight brand new, that's brand new oh nice i just throw that in there so you guys are dropping all new stuff for this ho- holiday then? Every week we have new product dropping, yeah. Oh, man. I'm going to have to check you guys out. Yes, Let's please. see. Everyone. <laughs> so. <laughs> Cyber Monday is going to be a whole thing too. So we're going to be uh, – it's going to be tiered. Um, Cyber Monday is going to be, I think, timed. We're going to do uh, – between a certain time is going to be a larger sale. A certain time and a certain time is going to be another sale. So first come, first serve. Oh, that's that's smart. Cyber Monday, that's a that's a new thing now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's probably even more new things. I I keep slowly getting out of the loop, like <laughs> Instagram <laughs> and TikTok and LinkedIn, and I don't even know anymore. You got to make some TikTok videos. <laughs> I got to come over there and do some TikTok videos with you and Aria. Yeah, I got the light. <laughs> light. I'm using it right now. <laughs> what light? The little circle ring TikTok girl oh, light. Girls used for selfies? That's the one. I have it. <laughs> right. You know what I was thinking? Like, um, I was talking to Taylor and we're trying to figure out like how like me and him met and I, and I know how. And then I'm trying to figure out how you and I met. 
Uh, uh, Do you remember? Yeah, I remember the exact uh, evening. I think it was my brother's birthday. Uh, E&O was one of the events, and I think my brother oh. was 25 or something. And I happened to be there, and we knew who each other were because I was dating one of your employees. Yes. Yes, yes. Are you going to say your name or am I? Subtosh, how are you doing? Subtosh. So Tosh was working for me at Ainokea at the um, Ainokea store in the mall. Shout out to Ainokea and Mark. But um, she was telling me about you saying like, oh, I have my boyfriend does um, promotions and he's trying to get into it. You got to meet him. I'm, and I was like, okay, that's cool. And um, yeah, like, and that's kind of how we met. We were at Ian O's and she was there and she introduced me. Right? Is that how it went? Yeah, yeah. That was, no, no, she wasn't there. Um, but oh. I, came, I came up to you guys because I knew who you guys were. Like, I wanted to introduce myself. I know I was all about, you know, like learning the industry, people who work in the industry, people who are part, are part of the industry, the, the guys kind of really running the scene for anywhere, I think. It's about doing your research and, and really kind of coming on confidently. So I, I remember actually it was February that year and uh, you guys were in the midweek. It was all the promoters were in the midweek. It was uh, you guys had Micah G them, had uh, uh, Vertical Junkies. Vertical Junkies had, had all the guys and I, that, I, that I saw, I would, I would run into and, and uh, looked up to and I, I thought were inspirations and stuff and I was like, I think I can do this. From doing house <laughs> parties, went to somebody was like, oh, let's throw a concert. So me and a couple of my friends are we're like, how the hell are we going to do this? <laughs> we made some phone calls. We teamed up with uh, one of the radio stations. And um, Kalana Young was the one to kind of give me my, my start. Um, awesome dude. Shout out to Kalana. Yep, uh, shout out to Kalana. Kalana, Kalana and, and his family. They're awesome. Um, and teamed up with Natural Vibes and did it at Pipeline Cafe. First oh, event, must have first been fun. event like a real concert, 21 years old. 21, like two weeks before that happened. And this is and all you. This is your deal. Me and a couple of my friends, yeah, yeah. And we, we made our own commercial. We did all that stuff. And I did the graphics for the flyer. We printed a, a bunch out, passed it out on all the beaches. Word of mouth. I didn't even, did we have cell phones back then? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Pagers, nah. <laughs> no, 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 it was way after. But I mean, maybe the Nokia or the uh, the, the Nextel might have been the Nextel at the time. Oh, Nextel. And uh, yeah, we did that event and it went well. And kind of from there, that's when you're like, "Who is this kid?" Yeah. So what happened was, as Tosh would tell me about you, and she said you did that event and. I know a lot of people in Kanioi, so I would hear your name once in a while, and then I would see you at the gym. You guys are, you and your brother guys are always at the gym. Yeah, you can tell. Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then um, you met me at ENO, and I was like, okay, this guy has has a character to him. You're confident, and you're like super cool. And then you started coming to my events, and just ha- ha- having having fun and just being being someone that that would come support and then i had an opportunity and this is when the ruckus starts so the opportunity was we had a chance to do our first 18 and over party and it was at venus nightclub so the owners of us the owners of venus came to us and and we kind of collaborated with island fire shout out to ryan from Island Fire, who's now Red Label. But he brought us on, and it was going to be an 18-over party on Wednesday. Artist Groove Network at the time never really did an 18-and-over party, and I needed help. So I was like, okay. I talked to Peter, who was my partner at the time, and I was like, okay, Peter, let's try to get this young boy on. He's kind of kind of young, but he's hungry. He's about 21 and he's in tune with that 18 and older community, especially in Kaneohe. So I remember you're working at Skin and I went to Skin and I asked you, I said, hey man, you want to be a part of this um, event? 
and you were like, oh yeah, that's that's oh, super yeah. cool. I'll be down. <laughs> yeah. And then we started recess Wednesdays at Venus. And to me, by far, that was the most ruckus event on a weekly level that I have ever done. I don't know about you, but that was ruckus. Yep. <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, just thinking about it, everyone that was a part of that remembers and everybody, it was a, it was a good, it was a good event that <laughs> so, I don't explain that. Like I got to a point where uh, you just had Ryan, uh, Ryan Wong on the, the podcast and he was starting the Wednesdays over there at, at D and B's. So like we would go to D and B's upstairs with O Lounge with Vertical Junkies hat. We yeah. would go and flyer their line because they were doing really well. And then <laughs> we would just drag everybody to our event until we took over. <laughs> Basically what happened. Sorry guys. I mean but I mean it's, we did it a certain way and, and it was successful <laughs> and I, I think we broke the bar sales record. Oh but, yeah. But like I, I mean we, I remember doing the weekends and Wednesday we we broke it on a Wednesday. Yeah. And our line went out to Kapilani Boulevard. Like, like I just remember just being like, hey, Chris, go get, like, whoever you want from that line, bring them in because they're not going to get in for a while. <laughs> people we knew, people we didn't know, taking girls out of the line, taking them in a yeah. club, dragging them away <laughs> from their boyfriends, and they're leaving their boyfriends. Oh, they'd be salty. Like, ah, oh, we can get you in, but <laughs> he, not him. <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's... <laughs> I wonder how many relationships yeah. got started or ended because of recess. Oh, I always, wanted, I always wanted to know how many kids were made because of our, our events. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're kind of like the godfather. <laughs> right? Like, if we think about it, how many people got married that met at our events? How many people had children that met at our events? And, and... Like that's the good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it, it was amazing. Sometimes they probably are regretted. And, and oh, they're, yeah. gonna, they're gonna blame you. <laughs> they're gonna blame me. <laughs> <laughs> probably everybody blames me for anything anyway. <laughs> so recess was a hit and it was our first 18 over event. And then we started doing um kind of more weekly parties throughout the weekends, which were predominantly 21 and over and i don't know which ones do you remember so so at the time it was just me you and taylor were artist group network so we were the three partners and and between your promoting career that was predominantly us three right yes yeah mostly us three um in the beginning i mean thankful to have like mentors like you know you and peter and, and even the partners that we were working with like uh brian simpson hansen oh, yeah. and, um, a, a bunch of people that we were able to do to do work with, and even the the bar managers, you know, or the owners. Like it was amazing and uh, opportunity, and, and amazing to to experience business like that on that level at, at a young age. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like all business until the event, and then it was just ruckus. Chaos. I don't, I don't well, know. I get, the I get... event that I wasn't. <laughs> perhaps a drunk cat. I don't, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? Like all the work went into making the event good. And then during the event, it was, <laughs> it was just have fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, I remember like when I first started with you, you know, like that's like, okay, go to, I mean, shout out to everybody out there that, that didn't go to college, but also did go to college, you know, just that they're just trying their best to kind of get by. I didn't go to college except for going to UH and uh, certain places to flyer or poster and get girls' numbers or emails like, <laughs> to, to invite them to our party. And I mean, it was, it was cool. It was, it was awesome. And you send me out like every week, okay, go to UH, go do this. We need at least uh, 50 emails, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> and we would, and we would do it, you know, and the events were awesome. It's crazy because like what from what like I came under Ronnie them and, and from what he taught me was kind of the same thing. Like it's that you just got to do it. Like if 
you're going to promote in this business. You got to know, you got to be confident. And he would just say, here's some passes, go talk to people and get them to come. So I'd kind of do the same thing with you guys. And, and I would be like, here's some passes, go get people to come and Oh, you'd be like the Pied Piper and just bring a load of people and, and help helping you learn the industry was fun for me because at, at one point, it was like people would talk to you about stuff and then I, it, would, it would be, okay, then he got it. I don't have to worry about things or things were under control because of what you learned being around the industry for so long. And, and it was cool to see the development. And, and the same with Taylor. Like Taylor right now is killing it. And it's because the way the three of us worked together and helped each other out was kind of cool. And it was cool to see the development. Yeah, by the time that we reached... Um a few years in and, and Taylor, we came in and, and it was like us three. It was, like, it was like a super awesome situation. You know? Like we spent a lot of time together, even though we're like on different age brackets a little bit, like we, <laughs> we don't need really to get into there, but I mean, it was, you know, it was super fun and uh, it was smart. We made the right decisions and sometimes the wrong decisions, but I mean, for the most part, we, we put ourselves out there every single time and, put it all out there a couple of times and <laughs> whether it worked yeah. or not, we're going for it. That's one thing about working with you is the risk that we take. It was, um, we were all in and, and yeah, we, we made some good choices. We, we had some bad choices, but it was, it was always, we were always all in. Like we always put everything, all the chips on the table and threw the dice and was like, let's see what happens. <laughs> even, even like when, uh, you know, like Taylor initially kind of getting into the DJs. We were doing stuff at, at like Hush and uh, Bonsai. <laughs> Bonsai was a dope event. Yeah. The past, I think one of my favorite uh, events we did was Passport because it was a that wrote that revolving event. A yeah, it was a di- different spot every week. Different venue every week of the month, and that was a really uh, different type of, of of event for for most party goers or whatever should I say that was when we started teaming up with level H shout out to Hanson because um that was his idea he brought to us and that was such an awesome idea and and it kind of created an atmosphere that changed every week so we didn't know what we were getting into so it was like oh today this this week's gonna be crazy this week's gonna be kind of mellow this week's gonna be a club event like it, it was a it was a moving party every Friday and and like it it was kind of cool to see everyone followed us to each event. It wasn't like a it wasn't that hard to promote, but it, yeah. was, it was crazy. And and uh and uh and um uh, no way out was no way out with, with Tony and yep. Cliff, Brian and and what what time was Brian? Even the boys from from Level Eight, you know, like with Pono and 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 Brian, them and Reese, all eventually going to Vegas and everything. They were still with us at the time. Yeah, Chai's Chai's was cool. Chai's was super cool. And then Oceans happened, and then that was just Oasis became a the thing. Yeah, so so we were revolving this party, and then one of our spots or stops during the um, rotation was Oceans. And they liked what we did so much that they gave us a contract to just stay there on Fridays. And we created Oasis. And that was when um, Brian Simpsons from Furious Styles came on. And that's when we had a long run of just one. Cl- that was, I think that was the longest Friday event that you, that you did, right? Like that was, yeah, that was yeah. a long one, huh? Yeah. We were, we were on a terrible of long runs for a minute, like with Oceans and... Uh, and Bonsai, and then we switched. Bon- well, it was on Saturday, and then Saturday turned into from Bonsai went to paparazzi, paparazzi. yeah. And then we moved Oceans to Sukiji's eventually. We got yep. that, and then that lasted for a minute too. Man, yeah, that was a long one too. That was a lot of years of uh, good events, <laughs> a lot of alcohol, a lot of alcohol, <laughs> and a lot of madness. How much can yeah. we say on this thing? Because there's so we much. We can say whatever, <laughs> bro. I'm just not trying to sell you out. <laughs> <laughs> so much things that are really big up. So many things. 
Yeah. Remember when you were Santa Claus since it's Christmas time? <laughs> it's almost Christmas time. It was around the same time. Was it your birthday? Yep. <laughs> I, I left mid party, went to the parking lot, changed my outfit into a Santa costume, somehow acquired two women um, on each arm going back to the event. Well, kid, this is not what happened. Like, first of all, we're like, Chris, you got to get in a Santa suit. And you're like, no. And we're like, Chris, you got to be Santa. It's my birthday. And you're like, okay. So then you went to the to the parking lot, and then you come rolling up with all these, like, this long line, and you walked in front of everybody, and you had these two hot girls on each arm. And I'm just like, what's going on? And he's in his Santa suit, and... Yeah, you just entered the club like the I don't know what that was going on, and it, oh, it was oh, 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 yeah, the, <laughs> not like no, not like them, you know, like that. <laughs> and then I I think we found you in the bushes with the Santa suit. I later had sex in the Santa suit that night. Yes. That's the one. <laughs> no, I yeah, later, so I later had we, sex in the Santa suit right outside the club. In the bushes, and we seen it. And bushes, it was like towards the bushes. What I'm thinking is, if some children seen you, what their thoughts about Santa would be. But I it was, think it was a nighttime. Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I well, not sure. many people see Santa having sex in the bushes. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm pretty confident the security guard saw me, but I mean, yeah, there's probably some video from that. Taylor probably has it. <laughs> I mean, he has 20 videos. <laughs> if Taylor ever wants to blackmail anybody, like he got the he got the footage of you. For I sure. was I was a, a single young man at a <laughs> event that we were throwing, and somebody wanted to have sex with Santa Claus, so I obliged. Hey, <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> it's the season, just the season. What, what's that song? It's the season. My dick in a box. <laughs> Jingle balls. <laughs> and now everything just went from there to here. And now look what happened. Yeah, well, we can get into those stories, but. <laughs> we, you know, there's, we don't, well, you, you definitely saved me from a, a lot of a lot of situations for sure. <laughs> yeah, I got a uh, uh, drink or water thrown on me because I tried to block from you. Well, see, that's the thing. I got punched in the face by a girl, and she, you were in between us. So I kind of blame you for that. Like, how did she get around you? I hit hard too, man. That chick punched me her in the eye, and I don't remember. Like, then, then you threw your your drink on her, but you missed her and got it on me. So, well, that's because I didn't know what to do. I had I just got punched in the face, and I couldn't punch her back because she's a girl. So. I had a drink, so I threw it at her, and then <laughs> it missed. <laughs> it was just ice that was a horrible water. night for me. She ripped like my shirt. <laughs> what is that? Get a new shirt. I mean, it's, it was ice cubes and water. I was fine. I was probably drunk anyway. I probably forgot about it like five minutes later. <laughs> yeah, I did. It had a lump on my eye. My shirt was ripped. <laughs> what? That was the last event that we did at that venue. <laughs> yes, that we was that did, was the. We never was did it Sorrentos. Time. I think it was top right. of the eye. We're like ninety thousand feet up. <laughs> yeah, and, there's only, and there's only one way to leave, and it's like the yeah. water elevator. <laughs> Pick somebody out of there. I definitely remember that. <laughs> so our events were pretty crazy. I mean, I think we all have a a share of unfortunate incidents at at our events, but we had a lot of good times and a lot of good memories. Um, I think one of the, the best memories I have of promoting with you and Taylor was our first concert at Aloha Laulea. And during the last, the start of the last um, act, I think it was three plus, and I have a picture of it. The three of us were standing on a stage and, and we collaborated with uh, Ray Minho, Ray, Ray Jr. But as a company of us together, that was the first big concert that we did. And, and, Oh, I just remember standing on the on the stage thinking like, holy shit, all these people came. <laughs> like, what how did that happen? <laughs> it 
it was such a good feeling. I was so glad to share it with both both you and Taylor because that's something I'll, I'll never forget. I, st- I have the picture hanging up in my wall from that, and and yeah, that was that was for me one of the pinnacle moments of of doing events with you guys. That that was super cool. Yeah, um, I guess I remember us wanting to, like, uh, especially me, because I because I was doing that local stuff before. I remember having it in the back of my my head for a while, and we were doing a lot of more like club stuff and uh, um, fat, like twenty one and over dressed up, and we did eighteen and over as well. But that was a uh, pretty awesome for for Ray to kind of come come to us with with that and. Um, for us to jump on and collaborate with that event, that was, I think it was sold out like at 5,000 people. And yeah, definitely to be up there with you guys where that was a new feeling for all of us. Yeah. And it was, it was incredible. Felt really good to go up there and, and see all the hard work that we put in probably for a couple of months. Um, turn out like that and, and be proud of the success that we that we had and then see everybody be down for all the, the local acts because I, I believe it was like 18, 18 bands for $18. Yep, that was the slogan, 18 three, bands three, for $18. Three, three venues, had, six, six artists on each stage. Yeah, that was a – we were running around like crazy people. That was fun, though. It was fun. And I had uh, – I was doing – I think I was running one of the stages and just with the MCs and stuff, meeting more – um industry people and, and creating more relationships because of, because of those events with uh, the concerts and, and the block parties with like uh, shout out to Aaron Makami. That guy's a good dude, man. Oh um, yeah. And that was just another level of, of um, what we were able to accomplish and we were all working together for sure. Yeah. I remember um, doing stuff at the show. We did major radio. We did the last birthday bash. We did, um, few other concerts with Ray and like meeting all these artists and, and getting to know them, like, cause they're with us all week. We even travel with them to outer Island. So like, for me, it was cool. Like we're meeting all these artists Like we get to cruise with common Kings. We get to cruise with catch a fire and, and I mean, tribal seeds and stuff. It, it was kind of surreal and, and it was cool to know these people on a personal level and, and, people that we listened to and and it it was it was such a cool cool experiences i always say like there's there's a lot of things we did in our life together that no one has ever like it's not normal shit like we experienced some crazy things and and doing those concerts were were just unreal i remember um just taking the bands to to bars and like going out with them and and just hanging out with the bands like they're our friends and it was super good fun although you wanted to although you wanted to lick the guitar player from tribal seeds <laughs> i was like the older guitar player from before that wasn't you just was bad time bad time i really had to i really thought you were gonna knock him out like we had to kind of like, we had too much stuff to do but he i mean it didn't happen <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they would have played for any more of our concerts if you knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, because then, well, I think they kicked him out after because he would just maybe the attitude. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but um, didn't we do the Bob Fest with them afterwards? Uh, Did we? Was it with them? I think so. I did, well, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yes, it, it was. It was okay. no, because the Bob Fest was at Lower Tower, and then that happened. Yeah, Mickey Shell. Yeah, that, uh, that incident. Happened on with Yukisha. <laughs> yeah, that was in the back of the show. <laughs> yeah. They wanted to go someplace, and and we were, we had an after party someplace, and we were running around like crazy. But they were they wanted to yeah they wanted to go to somewhere else, and yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, what, what comment he made? But he made a comment, and that was it was a little disrespectful. <laughs> so you're yeah. gonna slam dance him in the back of the show? <laughs> focus of the event and and finishing our job. We did. It was awesome. The, yeah, um, the jumping to outer islands was super cool. You know, like yeah, Maui, Big Island, and, and doing stuff over there was was different and different crowds. Uh, different it's crazy. Different. Like the 
the people in Big Island, especially like the crowds in Big Island, they treated us so good. Like they were like so thankful that we brought some, we brought people there to um to entertain them. It was, they were like thankful and grateful, especially in Kona. That was super good fun. I have that one uh, memory of of Kona, which is pretty cool. Like I don't know what was going on, but the uh, I think it was a Halloween one when we did it with Jay Bogan out here, mm. and uh, something happened with the sound, and lucky. Ray's uh, former electrician and stuff so he went and figured it out like they or else the whole event would have been done the sound guys that we had wasn't couldn't figure it out and he went in there and saves a day and it was like oh super awesome yeah right on Ray <laughs> what I remember for that concert is that they were giving away these J-Boog um, skate decks what you talking about yeah so I'll refresh your memory so they were giving away these nice J-Boog skate decks and I remember that you were collecting skate decks. You probably still are. And I remember you going like, oh, yup, I want one of those. We took the skate deck. We took the skate deck. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. It's we my put- house hanging on my wall. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. You didn't get a skate deck. It's mine. Hey, that's the perks of throwing the event. <laughs> I remember flinging CDs off the... I remember throwing CDs off of the stage at Shell. Remember that? And I was throwing them all like ninja stars. I think I hit somebody. <laughs> See, that's what you don't do. Right there. I know. Yeah, I got in trouble for that. What was the one where, uh, I don't know which event it was, where we had the glow sticks. <laughs> and then, uh, I don't know whose idea it was to like throw the glow. Like, everybody started throwing them at each other and throwing them forward. People were getting whacked. That was bad. That was bad. So it was... Then, um, it was a was great it? idea, maybe, like initially. And then afterwards, it was like, oh, no, this is... In hindsight... Don't do that. Well, they gave, they gave Ray, Ray gave everybody in the whole front glow sticks, their blue glow sticks. And if you rem- remember, it was um, Ho'onua's reunion or farewell concert or whatever. And they have that song, uh, Blue Light. Oh. So oh, when that song yeah. came on, everybody cracked their glow stick because it was blue. Super and awesome. then pl- Amazing. And then started throwing it up, and the whole front of the shell was just flying glow sticks. And I'm like, oh, yes. This, yeah, whacked. I'm like, th- I was thinking this is going to be a, a liability. <laughs> We're going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> it looked cool on the pictures, though. They like, look like Star Wars. <laughs> you been watching the new shows? You watching the new stuff? Oh, yeah. Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, I've been watching that. Yeah, you need to check that out. <laughs> All right, so subjects and stuff. But yeah, those concerts are crazy. The the last birthday bash was pretty cool. Like that's I still have the um poster with it autographed by everybody that was there. And for it being the last one and, and having gone to those from a little kid time to it was it was ran by um uh, who was Events Entertainment? What was that guy's name? Um sure. who was the name before? Yeah. Uh, Rick Schneider. So Rick Schneider was doing it before, and then he gave it to Ray oh, to do the last one. Right. And then we um, collaborated for the last birthday bash. And like that was kind of cool. Like we we're part of the last birthday bash. Has Artist Groove Network on the top of the poster. Hell yeah, that was cool. Because yeah, I remember yeah. that too. Like going, back when you could take coolers into the show and stuff. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Rick, Rick was a cool dude. That's the one from, uh, he owned a lower tower that, that area. Yep, waterfront. waterfront. Yep. You always had like a cowboy hat on or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> always cool. He's always cool. Oh, cowboys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, Niners are going to play them this year. And it's going to be a battle of the second string, but we'll see what happens with that. It's not going to be a battle at all. We're going to get demolished, I'm sure. I hope so because I went to um, California twice to watch the Cowboys and Niners play with you and I seen my team get demolished by your team sitting next to you twice. I know. I I remember. Yeah. Vividly. um, Us going down. down, I think it was the second game. What year was this? I forget. But we were going down the stairs trying to get to our seat because you got those seats from um, um, what are the names? Oh, yeah, so many Ricks. Yep. Um, yeah, they're <laughs> awesome. And we got those awesome seats, and we're walking down to them. And the game had already started, right? It took a while to get into the, into the gates. 
Yep. And as we're walking down the stairs, Zeke was running a touchdown right into the end zone. Yeah, right in front of my face. Yeah. And then yeah, I, that was I mean, like a like a dickhead, I guess. I, I just immediately started cheering right, right next to you. <laughs> well, I mean, that was your team, but yeah, that was rough to watch. I, it was kind of cool because at least my friends like were happy because we came like a bunch of you guys came with us that were Cowboys fans, but yeah, I'm never going to forget that dude. And I will have my retribution. Believe me. Oh, and it's not going to be, it's not going to be when we beat you and we're watching at home, we're going to be in the stadium and our team's going to smash the Cowboys. And I'm going to let you know that this is the retribution at that moment. Um, well, I think you need it because uh, I think after we won, I think it gave you um, yams and our other boys from the Bay uh, some some uh, cards. Uh, yeah, I still have it. Some sympathy cards. Yep. I'm sorry collecting for all the receipts. <laughs> yep. You get, yeah, you gave me a sorry for your loss card, and that yep. means you premeditated. You premeditated it because I know I, you didn't buy it in Cali. I bought a bunch of. <laughs> sympathy cards from Hallmark, ready, knowing that we were going to win. And it was fantastic. It worked out perfectly. Yeah, we took some cool trips together. We got to see BJ lose a few times. We got to um, that was, we got to see Russell and Lewis win. That was always cool. Watching them fight was always awesome. But snowboarding, we got to snowboard a bunch of times. That was good fun. That's, that's what I can't wait to do is... Um, once we can travel and do that kind of stuff, I, I mean, I'm getting older. I'm not going to know how long I can be able to go down a mountain at Mach 10. <laughs> Mach 10. The hip. The hip. The the hip. Yeah. I'm going to have to um, wrap myself in Nerf first. <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> but but yeah. man, oh. I miss that, though. That was one of my favorite things to do is snowboard. Like, and go on trips. Like we went on some fun trips together. That was in Washington when we went to watch uh, BJ and, and Nick Diaz. Yeah, that was that was a pretty crazy. I remember arguing with somebody in the bathroom, like, guys, like, oh yeah, we. I think we we're all wearing defend Hawaii shirts, and somebody yeah. was like, oh, BJ is gonna get is gonna get knocked out. I was like, when when is it happen? Like, when no, it's not gonna happen. We already damn why argued with him for like, like two minutes while we we're both at the urinal. You know, Sure enough, he didn't get knocked out. What I mean, he lost. But I mean, it was still. What I remember from that trip is you running around naked in the snow. I wasn't naked. Well, I, you weren't clothed. <laughs> I had my underwear on. In, in, in hindsight, it was a bad idea. I mean, <laughs> running it was like thirty degrees. Afterwards, my I mean, I was barefoot and <laughs> my feet were really on fire. Like I was like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and um, thank you to to Lee and Sharisa because I, I believe they sponsored part of the, the snowboarding and, and they're super kind to have us all in their house. Oh, yeah. A bunch of ruckus Hawaii yeah. people. <laughs> and they just let everybody in out, out of love. And, and I appreciate that. A shout out to to my friends, Lee Arenada and, and Sharisa Arenada. Yep. Thank but, you uh, for letting us take over your house for that week. Yeah. Played a bunch of drinking games. I got drunk and a, a lot of drinking games. And ran outside. Um, that seems to be with the normal. Well, not so much, but you getting drunk and doing something crazy is kind of the normal. You're lucky we don't have alcohol right now. <laughs> you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we can do this right it's after true. this is it's done. <laughs> we take some shots right after this is done. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> But yeah, that, that trip was we went, to, we went snowboarding. Where, where did we go? Crystal Mountain? I don't, know, I don't even remember. Somewhere in Washington. I was trying to run to look for a bear and then somebody's like, they're hibernating. And I was like, oh, I'm stupid. Sorry. <laughs> we had a lot of people with us that one. We had like Yams from the Bay, Taylor. Um, I think Real Deal Reed was with us. Reed. Your brother, guys. Yeah. Who else? Yeah. Hanson. Hanson was with us for that one. Yep. Yeah. Ray Ray even came for that one. Yeah, we he met him. Stay with he, us, but there's there. He got us the tickets for. We went to watch San Fran. I mean, not San Fran. Uh, Seattle Cardinals and Cardinals and yeah, oh, Seahawks put a whooping, man. That was yeah. Like, it was like forty to zero at the end of the first quarter. It was retarded. yeah, it was a bad one. <laughs> that was not. 
So what else is going on with you nowadays, man? Like you're just pretty much at the store? Yeah, um, pretty much just trying to work right now and, and, and trying to be, I mean, follow the rules, follow the guidelines and and what's happening with everything, like not travel because, you know, just putting people at risk. Um, I, I wish it wasn't this way. I don't, I don't think that it's as serious as it, as they're making it out to be, but I mean, it is what it is. Um, and uh, I just want to travel. Yeah, because you were, you were getting into it for a little bit. Um, I mean, you were taking huge trips, like, out of country and staying staying away for, like, a couple months and stuff. And that was – I know that that's what we talked about. Your goal was to be gone for, like, a year or so and kind of um, put a damper on, on this whole thing. That's kind of where I, I went, like, in my mind, I guess uh, – I don't know if you ever heard, but there's a a scene or some or something like that that every seven years you kind of change if you you change a little bit, you know. Um, yes. Your personality, your your goals, maybe your just your overall feeling about yourself, you know, your um, just all your you. Um, and I after that, like oh, years, like oh, it was eight, nine years of, of throwing events and stuff and, and being a, a, a crazy man. <laughs> uh, and, and actually like while doing that, like failed relationships, you no know, things weren't working out because it was hard with the job that we had. Uh, I realized after watching the, my, the secret life of Walter Mitty, uh, just go out and, and do something. So I decided to spend my 30th birthday on the Eiffel tower and, I just went and did it. Went to nine different countries, did met incredible people, had some incredible, really incredible experiences. Um, worked on a farm in Portugal, basically living out of like a dirty caravan, pooping in the woods, you know. <laughs> working on a uh, doing cleaning stables, chopping wood, working on a garden. It was it was incredible. I got to spend. My birthday on Eiffel Tower, though, and uh, Paris is a little sketchy, but I mean, <laughs> the overall experience of traveling is just, uh, I haven't got, gotten rid of that bug yet, so I, I still have a lot that I want to do and a lot of places I want to see. And, but you uh, ran with the bulls at that on that trip, too, huh? I ran with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain. Okay, That's I want to know how about that. Like, the, I always thought like that sketchy. was crazy. Sketchy. <laughs> like you're, how sketchy? It, Honestly, it's it's a. I mean, it's a tradition. I mean, it's kind of messed up. I mean, some people don't really care for it because they afterwards the bulls. They, they, it's a whole. It's a it's a big festival, traditional, you know. Like, um, but people go <laughs> that main place, Pamplona. People go over there. It's like a tourist attraction, and people just party. Some people places glass all over the ground. It's like pro- could be blood. I don't know. There's alcohol everywhere. There's <laughs> it's all red and white, and, and that whole that whole scene, but. Went out there, watched the bull, a bull fight first for my brother's birthday, and then the next morning we did a we did the bull run. You have to be there at eight in the morning. They line you up in a certain spot, and then you you look at the sign and it just has like people on one side of the line and then bulls on the other. It's pretty funny, and you start from there. And then once they they uh, there's a bunch of people. They have a um, what is it called? I'm not sure what, like a prayer or something like something, some traditional thing. I, I believe it's a prayer um, for San for men. I, I don't, didn't do enough research on it. I'm sorry, but <laughs> basically you start from that line and then they, they shoot off a gun and that means they let the bulls go and they shoot off another one to let, tell you, to, you gotta go. And then you just stay out of the way, I guess. So just one <laughs> section, I forgot what they called it, but, that's where the bulls like turn. They go down, turn like this, and then before they go back to the arena, and they oh. that's like where people get pinned and just get nailed. Unfortunately for us, um, <laughs> I went and we didn't read that there's different ranches on different days. So the day that we went, we had a ranch that was banned for like four years because they have too aggressive. Their bulls are too aggressive. Um, <laughs> so. The first day, it was the second day of, of the week-long um, festival. And the first day, I guess they had like six minor injuries. Like just like go to a nurse, get touched up, maybe like a scrape or a bruise. Our day had six major injuries, like 20 
20 something minor injuries. <laughs> None of it wasn't me, but uh, <laughs> but one dude like lost a testicle. Uh, what? One guy, one guy got punctured like in, in his like rib. Like those bulls don't mess with their hues, they're crazy. Like, I mean, I I I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't wait till all of them passed me. I was, <laughs> You're I had out. One, one or two passed me, and I sprinted all the way to the arena. Like, <laughs> <laughs> jumped to the side. I was like, I'm out of here. And then I didn't know that once you get into the arena, you can't go anywhere. You're stuck. And what, the bulls show up over there? Well, yeah, the bulls come running through the, the gate into the arena, but then they, they push them straight ahead. But everybody's all in there, and then you get stuck in there. Everybody that made it, you get stuck in there, and then they bring out little bulls that aren't like a – I guess the ones that are still growing, but they have like those things on top of their, their, um, what is that? Horns. Horns? I don't know. Bull horns. Yeah, bull horn. Antlers? Sounds smart. Right? Antlers. Antlers. No, antlers are deers. <laughs> or tusks. <laughs> no, tusks is like your mouth. It's horns, bro. Bull horn. Bull horn. Sounds right. That's what I said. Pointers. I don't know. Whatever it was, they have that all taped up and it's like all like, uh, so it can't like hurt people too much, and then they let them free for like, a couple minutes each. They have a whole bunch of them come out. One came too close to me. I panicked. I jumped over the wall, ate crap, and like <laughs> put a big dent in my shin. And I got back up, oh. and the top person like that was doing like security was like, "Get back in!" and they shoved me back over the wall. What? Leave. <laughs> and you signed up for that. I signed up for that, and I mean, at one point I tried to whack the the bulls. But then, I, uh, in hindsight, that would have been really bad. Because he would have kicked you. around huh? and would have oh. tossed you right over the wall. <laughs> but it was a super well, awesome experience. And, I mean, I now that I know a little bit more, like, um, I kind of want to do it again. I'd be down. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, work off this COVID weight. But, I mean... <laughs> I, I, yeah, my my theory is I don't got to run fast. I just got to run faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Uh, that was a pretty cool year. I, I got to do that that year. And the end of the year with, with our boy Yams from San Fran, I went on an open water shark dive with him later. Oh, then. that's right. I did two of those things. But that one, I kind of panicked and I jumped back in the boat. <laughs> yeah, we, I heard about that story. <laughs> So, okay, so to say when they do open up again, what would be, like, your destination of choice? Um, I immediately want to go back to Portugal because I just kind of, I mean, as I am Hawaiian and, and Kanaka, I am also Portuguese. Um, I've been trying to learn Portuguese, so eu falo um pouco de português. Uh, and I, I, I want to go back there and kind of experience more and kind of and learn more and, and possibly even try to buy some property out there. I don't know. We'll see. But besides that, I do want to visit Switzerland. It looks pretty incredible. There's a town in Afghanistan. I want to, I want to visit Bamiyan. Um, I, I would like to, uh, maybe dive back into, um, Southeastern, uh, Asia. I, I went to Vietnam before and it was really eye opening. And then I'd like to go and, and, maybe even to Cambodia or Laos and then kind of learn a little bit more. But I got to go to Bali with my brother at some point. So we'll see. We'll oh, see. That should be fun. Well, for me, I'm down for some of those trips. If I'm, if I'm available, I definitely want to travel. Uh, honestly, like for me, I want to go to Disneyland with my daughter, but like outside of the country, I want to go to Rome. I want to check out, um, like that area, Europe and stuff like that. I have never been. I've been to Asia and stuff. I went to Japan. I always wanted to see like the Colosseum. I wanted to see um, where the Mona Lisa is and pretty much everything in the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow that whole guideline. Just yeah, yeah. No, I was always, always fascinated by that stuff. So if I could, if I had a choice, I would probably pick that. But um, Japan is super fun. Um, I like I like Japan. Well, when you when you go to Rome, I'm definitely coming with you because um, I I left a cell phone over there when I was when I was there in 2016. I lost it, and I, I maybe I can come and find it. I don't know. I just, 
times. If you find it, I'll be impressed. Find my iPhone. <laughs> what kind of phone? Nokia. No, no. I lost. I had I had two um, iPhones on that on that trip just in case, and I lost both of them. <laughs> First one I lost in Rome, and then the second one I lost in Ibiza. Both times drunk. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess that's. I get, yeah, I guess I'd be down for that. I kind of do want to go snowboarding again, but Switzerland they, don't they have the Swiss Alps? Maybe we could snowboard there. Maybe bungee jump off. I'd be down for that too. Something crazy. Yeah. But well, we definitely got to go back to the U.S. and, and uh, watch some football games and. Uh... Yep. I owe you a trip to Dallas, so I'll I'll go watch the Cowboys lose to the Niners in your stadium this time. <laughs> I don't know what they're losing to the Niners, though. But yeah. <laughs> but um, I'll I'll come with you guys to Disney World. How about that? Oh, in Florida, we'll be down for that. <laughs> with Aria, let's go to Disney World. She'd be down for anything Disney. Aria is all about Disney. <laughs> but um. Yeah, we've been going for a while, man. Like, I, I wanted to bring something up to re, um, jar your memory on since it was Halloween a few weeks ago. Um, I, I always like this story because it makes me feel good. But we we weren't doing an event that Halloween, and for some reason, my parents were gone. So we went from my apartment to my parents' house to watch movies and we're going to pass out candy. I, I remember telling you like, oh, okay, um, we're, we're off tonight. So let's just do something low key. And we're like, okay, we're just pass out candy at trick-or-treaters. And I remember you were sitting on the couch. What is that? There was no trick-or-treaters. You're like this neighborhood yeah. with all these people. And I think maybe one, one group of people came and grabbed candy. Yeah, I had a, we had a load of candy. But I remember you... Um, you kept saying, oh, my eye, I have a sty in my eye. And I was thinking like, okay. And you were saying like, oh, man, in my family, if, if, if I have a sty in, my, in, in our eye, then I mean somebody in our family is pregnant. Or I don't know how you worded it or how did you word it? My, my grandpa, yeah. Like, um, I, I brought up the fact that I, I, was, I felt like I was getting one or I had one. And um, letting you know that, yeah, like, oh, my, my grandpa – when he gets a style, like I mean, somebody in our family is, is usually pregnant. I think I'm pretty sure it was all accurate, hundred percent every single time that happened to him. And so I was just letting you know that that's was a thing, and I was like, oh, not thinking anything at all, and just kind of yeah. brought that information up to you out of random, and then yeah, know. and then that maybe within the hour. I find out I'm having a baby <laughs> and I remember finding out that I'm having a baby and I'm like, Hey, Chris, your, um, your grandpa's style eye theory is working on you now because I'm going to be a daddy. And, and that was the first moment that I knew I was having a baby and which was Aria, which is my daughter now. And like, it was pretty cool that to share that with you at that time and, and how it played out. Like I just, can't be around you if you have a sty anymore. <laughs> I haven't. I, I I think I had one recently. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe do some research on that. But yeah, Maybe it's was, your brother then. <laughs> that was that was definitely a, a, a pretty cool coincidence. I want to say, yeah. or some type <laughs> of magic. You know, like I I was blessed to be able to be with you at that moment, and and blessed that you were. Uh, open to have me such a play a role in, in, in Aria's life. And I mean, I love, yep. you're the godfather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she loves her uncle, Chris. <laughs> I well, I think that, I um, forever. So future guys, oh, yeah. are we watching? Oh yeah. She's, she's not going to have, she's not dating till she's 30, but that's another story. <laughs> but I think so. I've been talking with Taylor and, and, and you, and, and it seems to me, which is kind of makes me super happy because I never really brought it up. We tried maybe a few times, but um, between you and Taylor, 
both of you guys on separate occasions and together are talking about us doing another event, a bigger event, maybe once a year or something like that. And for me, it was always like, okay, I bring the ideas up to you guys. This time it was you guys bringing it to me and that got me excited because doing these events, like I, I lost a lot of excitement, but partly is because we're not to, doing it together. I'm not going to do another big event unless it's with you or Taylor, you and Taylor. So I'm just putting it out there for people to know that we are going to do something. And I'm excited about it. I'm super happy that you guys brought it up to me. It makes me feel like it's important for you guys. So I think that's going to be something awesome. And Taylor's always been like all about doing new things. So it's like, if we're going to collaborate for an event, I'm like, I'm excited for that. And and it's something that you guys have been bringing, bringing up to me on a few occasions. And I just want you to know and let everybody else know that I'm down and, when we do, it's, it's going to be something well thought out and it's going to be something big. I'm not trying to do a little club thing with you guys. It... <laughs> we've, we've done the, the Go-Go's and DJs and all that stuff. And I mean, they're still, I mean, they're still relevant around the world for clubs. Um, but yeah, I definitely am looking forward to having an artist group network reunion. Yep. Reunion high, that's what it is, huh? Reunion high. <laughs> it's gonna be that I'm, happen I'm soon. We got we got we got some meetings to to do and, and uh, some some ideas to bring to the table and um, just overall, I think 2021 is gonna be perfect timing for all of that. Like, yeah, but he's been staying indoors for 2020. Like, it's been a rough one, and when we're ready to unleash, everyone's gonna be ready to unleash. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely feel um, definitely motivated for that, for sure. So we'll, we'll look forward to seeing what happens with that. But yeah, I'm putting it out there in the universe that it's gonna, we're going to do something and it's going to be me and Taylor and, and it's, it's going to be something special for sure. Let's get it. All right. All right, man. Well, we've been going for a while. I think what's next? The question of the week? Uh, before I question? question. Oh, yeah. What's up? Can I mention that funny Defend Hawaii story that I told you, Tad? So I can tell Chris. Yeah, go ahead, man. I want to hear it. So, tell it to me again. Chris, so I would say, you know, the, the year that uh, Ige was governor, so their inauguration, um, we had to film, film it for the TV broadcast. And the day before was like the, the dress rehearsal for it, the rehearsal, right? You know, of, of them doing the whole, you know. Yeah, yeah going through the whole. Yeah. So the lieutenant governor, his lieutenant governor at the time was a, uh, Sean from Maui. Oh, okay. Little guy, but you know when he was standing up on the on the stage and whatnot, doing all the the cues, what he's got to do. And he was wearing a jacket, so uh, you know shorts, you know slippers, but he's wearing a Defend Hawaii shirt. And I was like, oh, how's this guy? How's this hammer? Wearing that shirt. Nice. Wearing that shit at the Capitol. He knew what's up. He knew. <laughs> yeah. I, I think at the time I, I had a friend um, uh, who was working. Uh, with Lieutenant Governor or working for Lieutenant Governor. He also worked for, for Senator Danny Noy and, and some other things. But so he he was supporting us and stuff. I'm, I'm not sure how Lieutenant Governor had that. Maybe maybe my friend put it in his ear, you know, I'm not <laughs> sure. But, but shout out to those guys and shout out to, uh, I'm, I'm calling him the future Senator Rufino Dan. That guy's awesome. Oh, he, he could be, he could be the guy. But that's super. That's super awesome. And you were filming that, and and he was yeah, wearing yeah. We had to, to do it for the TV broadcast, but I just, I just <laughs> you know, it was a day before, and I just thought it was super funny. Like, oh, how's this guy, <laughs> AK forty seven, and all that shirt. <laughs> was AR. That was that was the uh, we got rid of that design in two thousand fifteen, and uh, we we never turned back, and we've been um, trying to change things up for a minute, and we're happy with where we've we've got, you know, to. Um, Got some new stuff right here. This is coming out pretty soon. Yeah, like I'm gonna have to get. I'm gonna have to get that one, dude. A big point out war, you know, with a bunch of other designs and uh, yeah, we, we're we're loaded with 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 new products. So uh, to finish it off, 
shop.defendhawaii.com, you know. We yeah. Support or go local. to no one and go visit Chris in the store. No, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it takes away from my day. I get distracted for like half an hour at a time because I'm easily oh, distracted. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I go in there, it's like I'm going in there to um to get a shirt, and then I'm home like three hours later, and Arya's like, "Dad, I thought you were just going to get a shirt." I'm like, "Well, Uncle Chris was there." <laughs> for, um, but yeah, like that that whole the whole idea right now, I, I really feel it, is strong with with like, supporting local because, I mean, um, the, our entire economy kind of um runs through that you know like a support local business the local, the local business and uh, workers from there are able to um, make a make a living and support other local businesses whether it be a grocery store or just everything in general like it needs to be more more uh, self-sustainable here in Hawaii and we support too many too many mainland um, brands and and mainland things and mainland um, ideas and we hope that, you know, everyone will, will kind of tend to come back and uh, buy local, buy locals, you know? Yeah, for sure. All yeah, right, man. We'll, oh, yeah, for sure. All right, man. Well, um, it's time for the question of the week. And it's our Thanksgiving episode since this is going to drop. So uh, hopefully it's a Thanksgiving question. Yeah. So the question of the week, you guys, is what are three things you are thankful for? Oh, I guess that is Thanksgiving. So you want to go first or you want me to go first? Uh, I'll go first. Okay. Um, I'm definitely thankful for for my family. Um, just being supportive uh, in general, like, you know, my brother, my, my grandma, my cousins, my, I got a big family. I'm, last name is Mehova, <laughs> Hawaiian Portuguese. <laughs> We're all over the place, you know, like for both sides, mom and dad and, just thankful for the way I was able to be raised. Um, I feel like I got raised right. And I'm thankful for, for being able to, to have the life that I, that I have and uh, the mindset that I have and, and uh, be given the opportunity to, to think different than, than just a normal. Um, I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for you, Thaddeus. <laughs> and, and, Everyone else who, who has my back and supports me, the lunch table gang, my my boys, uh, just everybody we've worked with over the years, my friends, Taylor, everybody. Uh, and then I'm thankful for Above the Bridge podcast. <laughs> That's a plug. <laughs> pod.com. Yeah. <laughs> It's been a, damn, I got to be thankful for the family. <laughs> for me, I'm thankful for my family. And um, especially at this time, like I'm going through a few situations where our families come together and, and I'm including my, my um, inner circle of friends. I consider them family. So I'm definitely thankful for that. Um, it's, it's been a huge part of my life and, being together with my family on special occasions has been the staple of, of the person that I am. I'm thankful for my daughter because she makes me a better person. And because of her, I've changed for the good. And I see myself in her so much that it, it's super cool. I'm, I'm thankful and blessed to have her in my life. And of course I'm thankful to be living in Hawaii for me the person that I am, I, I don't think I could have adapted to anywhere that doesn't have this aloha vibe, that doesn't have the um, smiles on the street or the shakas to random people. It's like, I go anywhere else, it's not like this. So I'm thankful of, to be living in Hawaii. And, and I, I try to, on the daily, not take it for granted because sometimes you do. Like, it's just my life, your life, you're living here. You don't appreciate it. But I'm taking a lot of steps to appreciate it more because I think the way people are in Hawaii, that aloha can spark or seed it throughout the world. And if that's the case, then we got to live it here first. And, and I'm glad to be a part of it and glad to be living it. And I'm very thankful because, I mean... My soul could have been dropped off on any part of this planet 
but God decided he's going to put my soul on this little speck and I'm, I'm thankful for that. <laughs> oh, you definitely want that answer. I, I, <laughs> I no, wait, you did. You said an ATV podcast. <laughs> the most amazing, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, um, like we said, um, you can find Chris on Instagram. It's Mr. Meheula. Um, Shout out to Defend Hawaii. They sponsored me. They sponsored Artist Group Network. They sponsored this podcast. And they always been there for me. They were the only brand that would... What was it? When we had ecosystems, they only put Defend Hawaii in our store on the west side at that time. And um, shout out to Mike B. He he always supported everything we did. And I owe that guy a lot. And, and I have a lot of respect for him. So shout out to Mike B. Um, you can find them on Instagram, Defend Hawaii, correct? Yep, at Defend Hawaii. And website, shop.defendhawaii.com. And the, the No One store is at VS No One, like verse No One. All right. A N O W One. All right. Um, you can find us at um, atbpod.com um, on Instagram, Above the Bridge Podcast. Our YouTube, all the videos from all these um, podcasts is on our YouTube channel, Above the Bridge Pod. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in and, and listening to the podcast. And that was pretty good, huh? What do you think? Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Um, <laughs> I feel like all we did was talk about memories. <laughs> How oh, awesome! Well, we see, like, so- yeah, how awesome we are, yo! <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, so, listen to all cool things that we've done. So my um idea for for us to do another one is I want you, me, and Taylor to do a podcast together, and it'll be more like getting into like the naughty stuff and the more crazier s- situations that we had promoting, and I think. Um, we we got to be in person for that and a few drinks and and we can open that can of worms together. <laughs> it'll be documented. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll be during our meeting for the reunion. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on, man. And I know you're busy, especially this time of year. And um, I love you, bro. You've been there for me for a lot of different things. And love you, love choke, bro. Love you, love you, Aria. I know you're around there somewhere. <laughs> yep, she's right there. <laughs> and right on. B-Boy, uh, was it? Boy Band Boy John. Boy Band John. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, yeah, I'm thankful yeah, for you, part. for you, John. You're helping me out with this show, and you believed in my idea for this. What, what is that? What is that? Oh, I, I guess but yeah, that. I'm thankful for Boy Band John for helping me out with this podcast because... I took this idea and brought it to him and, and he was down with it. And man, it's hard to find people that support you. And, and I appreciate you, man. You were, you were talking about this for a minute and, and to see you out here doing it. I'm super stoked for you. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right. Follow Boy Band John at BBJ808 on Instagram. Said no. Go watch his crazy videos. <laughs> All right, man. Um, That's it. I think we're done. Um. As always, shout out to the Artist Groove Network. Aloha. I want to come Thank over you, brothers. I'm bringing a bottle of wine. I'll be right over. Bring it over. <laughs>